Just Fairies, the podcast about fairies. Today we are talking about three fairies for Stina Line built in Austria. For most listeners, it will initially sound unusual to talk about seagoing fairies being built in Austria, far from any seashore. But the shipyard Osterreichische Schiffswerft in AG, Oswag, in Korneuburg in Austria, developed and built seagoing ships from 1960 onwards, including ferries for Stina Line AB, namely the three sister ships Stina Tender, Stina Timer, and Stina Topper. The town of Korneuburg is located about 12 kilometers from Vienna. The beginnings of the shipyard go back to 1852. At that time, no one would certainly have thought that seagoing ships would one day be built here. After all, the nearest major coastal city, Trieste in Italy, is more than 350 kilometers away. However, the way to Trieste was not relevant for constructing seagoing ships in Korneuburg because the whole thing could only work by taking the vessels across the Danube River to the Black Sea, which was more than 1,000 kilometers away. And that is precisely how the Stina ferries came from Austria to the maritime world. Stina Tender, construction number K709, was keel laid in Korneuburg on the 1st of January 1974. Stina Topper, number K710, on the 23rd of June 1976. And finally Stina Timer, number K711, on the 26th of June 1976. Ten ships were initially planned, but this did not happen. The project was called T-102 and is highly controversial in Kor Neuburg today because it got the shipyard into big trouble. Austrian newspapers as well as the city of Kor Neuburg reported strange political influence and mentioned an apparently unexplained death of the shipyard's board director, which is considered mysterious in Kor Neuburg. This is material for a business thriller, but here we will deal exclusively with the technical aspects of this unusual order. Kor Neuburg built the ferries under the supervision of the Classification Society DNV. They were intended for worldwide service and had the following daughter. Length 102.00 meters, width 18.14 meters, maximum draft 5.70 meters, and 2,817 gross register tons. The new ferries had the highest launching weight at the Kor Neuburg shipyard up to that time. They were launched on the existing slipway with a transverse launch. Stina Tender slipped into the water on the 15th of January 1976. Stina Topper followed on 22nd of June 1976 and Stina Timer on the 28th of January 1977. After the launch of the first ship, the installation of the machinery and other technical equipment continued intensively, while work continued in the shipbuilding department on the second and third units in sectional construction. On the first ship, the controllable pitch propeller shafts were installed only after launching. To do this, the ship had to be trimmed so that the stern with the shaft outlets was completely out of the water. The shafts were inserted by means of auxiliary constructions. In the engine room area, work was usually carried out on three levels, one above the other. Pipes were laid under the floor, machines and switch boxes were connected above the floor, and cables and lighting were installed in the ceiling area. Since the ships in their later completed form would not have fit through the Danube bridges, which were too low, they were built in two pots. After completion, the hulls and superstructures were brought down the Danube to Galati in Romania and assembled there. The hull, including superstructure, was made in segmental construction and welded together. Ten watertight transverse bulkheads divided the ship below the main deck into empty cells, engine rooms, and rudder room. The foc'sle was provided with an ice-breaking bow, 
and the water lines of the stern were designed as a catamaran shape. Two cargo decks were available, connected by an internal, fixed ramp. At sea, this was closed watertight with a hydraulic folding cover. The main deck was accessible via stern gate and a bow visor with a loading ramp and offered a lane length of about 350 meters, the deck above 340 meters. Lashing devices for trailers were fitted on both decks. It was also possible to load containers. For the living quarters in the superstructures, the M1000 system from German shipyard Blohm and Voss was used. This partition and sealing system, installed on countless merchant ships, offered great flexibility to meet individual requirements. Bulkheads and ceiling panels could be easily replaced as needed, and the components were standardized. According to its function, each room equipped with the M1000 system was a self-contained architectural unit. The machinery could be operated in 16-hour watch-free operation and was housed in three watertight compartments. The engines were designed to cope with winter conditions in Scandinavia and tropical conditions with a seawater temperature of 32 degrees Celsius. The main engine room housed two medium-speed KHD four-stroke diesel engines with supercharging and charge air cooling for propulsion. They could deliver up to 3,750 kilowatts at 600 revolutions per minute. The power from the main engines acted on two reduction gears with output for the shaft generators and on the two controllable pitch propellers. The propulsion engines could be started and stopped electro-pneumatically from the engine control room. They ran at a constant speed. To KHD auxiliary diesel engines, which drove brushless three-phase generators, were available to supply the onboard power supply. At sea, shaft generators could also provide the electrical supply. A total of around 85 kilometers of cable were laid for the power and lighting network and all other equipment on board. Two reduction gears reduced the speed at the controllable pitch propeller shaft to 276 revolutions per minute. The two four-bladed controllable pitch propellers with a diameter of 2.9 meters were controlled by a pressure oil housing located forward of the forward stern tube bearing. Two booster pumps supplied the auxiliary diesel engines with marine diesel oil from the day tank. This was filled by a separator that drew its supply from the storage tanks at the ship's aft. The heavy fuel oil separator took its fuel from the settling tank. For this purpose, two booster pumps delivered the heavy fuel oil to the propulsion engines via viscosity control. The excess was fed into a mixing tank. A high-low temperature central cooling system cooled the system. Two titanium plate coolers dissipated the heat through a sea cooling water circuit. For each of the three cooling circuits, one sea service pump, one standby pump, and one harbor cooling water pump were installed. The operation of the ship's engines was controlled by a warning and monitoring system consisting of remote measuring devices for pressure, temperature, and speed. The equipment on the bridge included a magnetic compass and a gyro compass. Also installed were a self-steering system, an echo sounder system, a speed measuring system, two radar systems, a radio direction finder, and a deck navigator. The transfer of the ships across the Danube turned out to be not unproblematic. The transfer of the Stina Tender Hall, planned for June 1976, could not take place due to a collapsed road bridge in a hot summer, which led to low water levels on the Danube. The hull was grounded. Later, the yard took an alternative route. This attempt was unsuccessful, as the tugboat could not pass under a bridge. So the ferry's hull had to be towed back to the shipyard in Kornuberg. There was nothing left to wait for a normalized water level, which finally came in January 1977. The still unfinished ship was sold to United Baltic Corporation in London as early as July 1976. The vessel was lengthened by 28 meters by German yard Nobis Grig in 1977 before being handed over to the owner on the 14th of October 1977. Later the ship was named Goya. 
Stenotopper was delivered to Stenline AB in Gothenburg on the 27th of May 1977, Stenotimer on the 11th of April 1977. Although Kor Neuberg proved it could also build large seagoing ferries, constructing the three ships resulted in high losses. According to the contract, Stena paid 27.4 million US dollars for all three ships. However, the project had cost 56.7 million, resulting in a loss of 29.3 million US dollars for Kor Neuberg. This was the Just Ferries podcast about three ferries for Stena Line built in Austria. If you would like to learn more about ferries, please visit Just Ferries.